Are you tired of writing lengthy and complex code in your React applications? Well, that's where React hooks come in. Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on React hooks and how they work. With React hooks, you can manage state and perform side effects and create reusable logic with just a few lines of code in your functional components. They allow you to simplify your code and make it easier to maintain without the need for complex class components or higher order components. Plus, they're just plain fun to work with. In this video, we'll dive into what React hooks are and how to use them to make sure your code works smoothly. So stay till the end to level up your React skills and add some hooks to your toolbox. With that, let us take a look at the agenda for this video. First, we'll talk about what are React hooks, then we'll look into when to use hooks, then we'll look at the rules of hooks, and then we'll move on to the hands-on part. And with that, we'll conclude. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates from us. So let us talk about what are React hooks. React hooks are the functions that were introduced in React version 16.8 as a way to add state and other React features to functional components. Prior to hooks, state could only be managed within class components using the setState method. Hooks allow you to use state and other React features such as context and lifecycle methods in functional components. There are several built-in hooks in React and some of them include Starting with useState, a hook that allows you to add state to a functional component. Second is useEffect, a hook that allows you to perform side effects such as fetching data from an API or manipulating the DOM in response to changes in the component's props or state. Third is useContext, a hook that allows you to consume a context created by a React.createContext provider. Fourth is useReducer, a hook that allows you to manage more complex states using a reducer function that is similar to how state is managed in Redux. Now we'll look at when to use hooks. React hooks can be used in many situations, but there are a very few key factors to consider when deciding whether to use hooks or not. Starting with functional components, hooks are designed to be used with functional components. So if you're using class components, you will not be able to use hooks. Second is state management. If you need to manage state in your component, you can use the useState hook. Hooks such as useReducer can be used for more complex state management scenarios. Third is side effects. If you need to perform side effects such as fetching data from an API, you can use the useEffect hook. This hook allows you to perform side effects after rendering the component. Fourth is reusability. If you have a piece of logic that needs to be reused across multiple components, you can create a custom hook to encapsulate that logic. Fifth is performance optimization. If you need to optimize your component's performance, hooks such as use callback and use memo can help by avoiding unnecessary re-renders. Next is context API. If you're using the context API to pass data down to child components, you can use the use context hook to consume that context in your component. And finally, cleaner code. Using hooks can often result in cleaner and more readable code, especially when compared to class components. Now let's move on to rules of hooks. The rules of hooks are a set of guidelines that you should follow when using React hooks to ensure that your components work correctly. Some of the main rules include only call hooks at the top level. You should only call hooks at the top level of your functional component not inside loops or conditions. This is because hooks must be called in the same order on every render. Second, only call hooks from React functions. You should only call hooks from React functions, such as functional components or custom hooks. You should not call hooks from regular JavaScript functions. Third, call hooks in the same order. You should always call hooks in the same order on every render. This is because hooks rely on the order in which they are called to maintain state between renders. Fourth, don't call hooks conditionally. You should not call hooks conditionally, such as an inside if statement, because this can cause the order of hooks to change between renders. Next, don't call hooks in loops. You should not call hooks inside loops, such as for or while loops, because this can cause the order of the hooks to change between renders. Finally, only call hooks from React components. You should only call hooks from React components, such as functional components or custom hooks, not from regular JavaScript functions. By following these rules, you can ensure that your React components work correctly and that your hooks maintain state correctly between renders. Now I'll move on to the hands-on session where I'll explain how to use hooks effectively. 
So let us begin by opening Visual Studio Code. And I hope you have integrated React with your Visual Studio Code in order to proceed with this. So with that being said, let us open this file that I have saved here in a folder called React Project. Under Source, we have this called App.js. So I'm going to show you in detail along with the result on the browser so that we have a clearer understanding. Starting with importing React. And now we use this function. Let's call it app. Under that, we're going to return some values. So here we are going to create buttons. So for that, we are going to open and close button tags using this keyword button. So first will be a minus. And then we're going to set the span that is zero. And now we are going to set a button again, which is plus. So as you might have understood, we are creating buttons for a number that you can use to increase and decrease the value of these numbers. And with that, we are just going to export. All right. So what we have to do right here is we're just going to use this command that is npm start. After waiting for some time, as you can see, it has opened on the browser. Okay, let me save this. And now it has compiled successfully. Yes, as you can see, the zero here that we have included in the span and these are the buttons that you can use to increase and decrease. So as you can see, these buttons are not functional right now. So let us use a React hook to provide some functionality to these buttons. All right, moving back to Visual Studio Code. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add use state here using the curly braces, use state. And now we're going to provide some functionality to that app. To do so, we are just going to take constant and define count and set count, which is going to return an array when you assign it to use state. And let us say, let us set this value to four. All right, moving on. So for these buttons to increase and decrease whenever we press them, we should provide some functionality to them. So you can do that by just giving out the keyword function. And let's call this decrement count. And we're going to set count, which is going to be previous count. And whenever we decrement it using the minus operator, so it reduces by one. This is what we are doing here. And similarly, we're going to define another function that is function increment count. And we're setting the count from again previous count Now this is going to be previous count plus one. When you use the negative operator to decrement it, it is going to be previous count minus one. Suppose the value is three and you're pressing the negative button, which means it's going to go down to two, which is decrementing minus one. Similarly, in the increment count, it is going to be adding plus one. So that is what we have done here. So how do we associate these functions to these particular buttons? So for that, we can use on click, so what we're going to do is we're going to, so we are basically telling that on click of this button, uh, it should be decremented. So we're going to decrement count on click. And for span, instead of zero, we're just going to count it. That is for span. And similarly for this button, also we're going to use on click. And instead of decrement count, we're going to increment count. This is pretty much done. So let us save this. Okay, we might have some errors. Okay, there is supposed to be a comma here. And after that, we don't have any errors as you can see. So let me go ahead and save it. And let's check our browser. So as you can see, since we have set use state 
to 4 here it is pretty much showing 4 here and whenever we try to increment it is getting incremented by 1 and when you try to decrement it it is decrementing by 1 so this is pretty much how you toggle with react hooks and we have seen a small functionality of how they work so i hope this tutorial was easy to follow so moving on in conclusion react hooks are a powerful feature in react that allow developers to manage state perform side effects and create reusable logic in functional components by following the rules of hooks and having a strong foundation in javascript and react basics developers can use hooks to write cleaner more maintainable code that is easier to reason about while they may be a learning curve when first working with hooks they can ultimately help to streamline development and improve the overall quality of react applications with that we come to the end of this video thank you for watching just a quick info guys intellipad provides full stack web development course in collaboration with enict iit guwahati the course link of which is given in the description below